Hey everyone, welcome back to Alf's Mustang Garage. Today we're continuing on our 289 engine rebuild. And today's video is all about installing the crankshaft. If you've been following or watching this playlist, the very first thing that we installed was the camshaft. Um, that is now installed and now we are ready for a crankshaft install. So. Um, just as a reminder, we're making sure our engine block is clean and free of any kind of foreign materials that may get into your bearing surfaces. So all of these oil ports and passages have been blown out and cleaned out um, with clean filtered compressed air. Um, there are multiple ways to do that with you know some wire brushes and whatnot, but as long as you're being mindful of that sort of thing and uh, making sure everything's clean, generally you probably should not have an issue so let's jump right into installing the crank we're going to jump right into prepping the engine block so obviously we need to put in some bearings one thing that i will advise when you're getting all these bearings opened up here these are fresh out of the package there are greasy like fingerprints on that i don't know i'm not sure if you can see it on the camera but I mean, people have to touch these when they package them, I assume, there's a greasy fingerprint on it. So you wanna clean your bearings before you actually set them. Since we're talking about cleanliness, um, this is why I like wear gloves when I'm assembling this engine. Like I don't want any kind of like foreign materials or oils and grease coming off my, my skin, my hands to get onto anything. Like will it cause an issue? I don't know. I just don't like to be like reckless and take chances. So. Um, but I am going to like wash these um, just with like warm water and just Dawn dish soap just to kind of like wash this off and then let it dry and then we're going to install these. So when you got everything good and cleaned and ready, all your bearings are good and clean, we're going to install these into our uh, main saddles. Um, there are going to be a couple bearings that are very unique. They have these sides on them. That is the the rust bearing, it's gonna go right here in the middle, okay? Um, now, it's important to note that do not put any engine assembly lube here. Your bearing needs to be dry, okay? And that's because when you first start this up, it needs to be able to grip into the saddle. Um, and you don't wanna spin the bearing. If it's all lubed up, then you run that risk, okay? but this is not a rotating part. This is a stationary part. You don't need the lube here. It will get lubed, but it's just not necessary for startup. You need it to be dry. You have little notches that go right there. Push that down so that both are flush. It's also important to note, there are two different types of bearings. The one with the slots are gonna go into the block. The ones without slots go into the caps. Okay, and there's your main bearings installed into the block. Okay, so now we're ready to put the crank in. We will put uh, engine assembly lube just on all of our bearings. where I don't like to skimp out like it's okay to make sure this is all over the place. This is very vital on your first startup.
Uh, bearings are in, bearings are lubed. We do want to put in a rear main seal as well with these old, uh, you know, early model small block Windsors, two piece rear mains. So pay attention to the lip or that groove. It needs to face towards the engine, okay? That's what's sealing the oil as it gets pressurized against that seal. It goes this way. It does not go this way, okay? It's very easy to overlook this. It also needs to be installed with an offset. This here needs to be about 3 8 of an inch sticking out on one side. Doesn't matter which side, as long as the two seals offset each other like that. I am also gonna install a little bit of lube on here. You don't want anything to start up dry initially. Okay, so we're just gonna lightly coat that so that nothing's turning on it dry. And then we'll measure that and make sure it's at three eighths of an inch and then we're good. Okay, we are now ready to drop this crank in. Right down in. Okay. Now this is important. I'm not going to rotate this crank because I'm going to check my clearances with plastic gauge. So it's usually better to do that with no assembly lube on those journals. Okay. So I'm trying to kind of relate to the average DIYer and um, person that's just going to be doing this himself. So I'm not going to um, be using any like super expensive precision measuring instruments. Um, I am going to rely mostly on my machine shop to machine everything correctly. However, I do think it's smart to use plastic gauge to try to get a judge of your clearances. This is not going to be as pristine accurate as some high dollar tools, okay? But it is going to get you pretty close to the ballpark for your average DIYer that's going to be doing this. That's most of these people that are watching this video are going to be doing. So um, I do take this to a very good reputable machine shop, Jensen Automotive in Ogden, Utah. Um, they do very good work, but you should always double check your clearances before you just trust everything on one system, okay? It's all about checks and balances, okay? So we're going to break off a little piece of plastic gauge. We're just gonna kinda lay it like that on each journal. And that, once you have your plastic gauge all laid out on your crank journals, we're gonna install the bearings without lube because we're just checking, we're temporarily installing these to check clearances, okay? These are all numbered. Number one, with an arrow pointing towards the front of the engine. So, this is number one. Number three gets the thrust bearing, in case you forgot. Okay, now we, when, we, when we install this like officially, we'll make sure we get the seal in there, but for checking clearances, we're just gonna install it without the seal. End caps are on, so we're gonna torque these down to spec. We're gonna start in the middle and work our way out, okay? We're not gonna go full torque on the first go around. We're gonna do like maybe half, 
or even before half turn, that doesn't matter. As long as you just kind of go a little bit at a time and the crankshaft will go nice and evenly down, okay? The torque spec is 6270 foot-pounds. Um, we're gonna go right in the middle at 65. So I think I'm gonna go the first round at 20. So yeah, I went around this in three passes. I first went down to 20, and then I went to 30, and then I'm gonna end with 65. Okay, now that everything is torqued down to spec, we're gonna take off all the caps and Take a look at the plastic gauge. If you can. Sometimes it takes a little bit of a wiggle. Okay, so you can see the impression on the bearing. You will also see it on the crankshaft as well. So now you have all your caps off. You can kind of compare your plastic gauge, you have inches on one side, millimeters on the other. The specification that um, we are looking for is a fairly good range from like five ten thousandths to 24 ten thousandths. So these to me look like they're right in the range of two thousandths to me. So I am very happy with that. That tells me um, with the measurements taken on this crank, this crank was turned 10 thousandths. Um, and then we had to get, you know, 10 thousandths um, undersized bearings. And so everything is working. I mean, it's all uniform here throughout here. You can even check this on the crankshaft. Two thousandths of clearance is, is good. And again, like just to emphasize, this is not like a replacement for a very nice precision measuring tool. This is for the average Joe, for the average DIYer, just to kind of double check and verify that you have the correct size bearings for the crankshaft that you're using. So that's all you're doing is just kind of checks and balances to make sure that you're not going to run into any kind of oil pressure issues. Once you've verified that you have adequate oil clearance, you can go ahead and put these main caps back on with lube this time. I put some lube down on the crank journal and on my bearing. My bearing is installed correctly. They have little, little tangs, little tabs. And this crank journal is marked number two with the arrow pointing forward. On your rear cap you have to do your rear seal um, one thing to watch out for that little hole right there from the factory they had like a set pin which kept the original rope style seal in place um, they are still out there so you gotta kind of watch out if you tore this engine down and you had a rope seal you probably still had that pin so you want to like drive that pin out so it's just kind of like a hole um, um, it's not very common, but you know we still see those from time to time. So um, again, lip of the seal towards the front of the engine. And because on the engine side over here, we have this side sticking out 3 8 of an inch. What that means is we're going to stick the offset of this one like so, and we'll measure that to be three-eighths of an inch and we'll put a nice little uh, thin bead of lube on that. I'll jump and do it again. Okay, so we're gonna get our lube in our bearing just like all the others. Make 
sure the seal's nice and lubed as well. Doesn't have to be crazy, just a nice little film on the seal. Now we are gonna put a little daub of black RTV silicone right on the top of each end of the seal. Give her a little bit more accretion. And then you're gonna put it on the engine block side on that one. Just gotta fill that cavity there. So now we can install this one. Okay, so I just kind of like to watch, you know, my end of the seal there, make sure it kind of goes in correctly. And then the other side of the seal is going up into the cap. Like that. There it goes. Okay. Should be able to feel it go in nice once it goes in. Shouldn't have to force that one. Okay, so now we're back to torquing. Um, again, I like to go in two stage or three stages, I should say. 20, 30, and then um, 65, ending with 65. So, but I think I covered as much as I can as far as all the important things. Um, bearing clearance, um, cleanliness, the lube. You want to just take your time be diligent, be disciplined, and just um, you know think about all the things that um, maybe you wouldn't necessarily be thinking about otherwise. So, um, with that being said, please keep in mind um, I'm not here to kind of help you select out the parts. I'm here to help you kind of show you how it goes together. If you need help getting the right parts, that's where you need to like build a good relationship with your local machine shop because um, that is where they're going to help you like pick out the things that you need. They're going to help you check your crankshaft, turn your crankshaft because your journals can become out of round. This one was machine 10,000s to make it in round. Um, that's another good thing for the plastic gauge. If you see your plastic gauge when you check that, if it kind of like tapers in or out, you have a crank that's out of round. So. You're looking for evenness, you're looking for consistency, and then um, you won't have any problems. Okay, so final round, 65. That's where I like to go. And then you should be good. So, it's a little tough. So I will put, you know, links in the description for all the stuff I used, sources for, you know, torque specs and all that kind of fun stuff. But anyways, as always, uh, appreciate you being here. Appreciate your support. If you found this video, this, uh, <laughs> this vehicle, if you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up. If you want to follow us along, subscribe to the channel. It does help us grow tremendously. So we really appreciate that. And then it helps make it easier for us to make you more videos to help you along to keep your Mustang on the road and out of the garage. We'll check, we'll catch you next time.